It's one of the most extraordinary resignation letters you've ever seen. We were wondering yesterday why we hadn't got one. Normally, you tend to get an exchange of letters quite soon after someone leaves government. Well, uh, I think the answer <laughs> might be that this one took quite a, a long time. It's three closely typed pages of political bile. And Suella Brahman is taking aim at the Prime Minister's character. She's revealing that there was a contract, she alleges, between him and the Prime Minister, uh, which was agreed to bring her on side, which she says was pivotal uh, to him uh, taking over the party after Liz Truss's uh, government uh, collapsed. But she's saying so much else besides. She's trying to close off the Prime Minister's options when the Supreme Court judgment, uh, which is so critical, he thinks, to his fortunes, comes tomorrow on whether the government's allowed to send uh, asylum seekers back to Rwanda. She's saying, well, if you win it, uh, you haven't made proper provision for it to work properly. If you lose it, well, I told you so. Everywhere, she seems to be making some sort of battle cry. And the great question is, is there actually an army behind her to come in behind her and fulfil what she seems to want, her, her battle aim, which is to bring down Rishi Sunak? And when you look at the numbers, it doesn't look convincing. There are senior figures in the government I've spoken to today who think that the threshold that would be required for a no-confidence vote, 53 letters going in to the chairman of the 1922 committee, these figures in government think that the, this particular nascent rebellion is way off that. At most, two dozen was an estimate I got. And even if they were to trigger a no-confidence vote, these very unhappy people, and there's quite a few of them around, there aren't enough of them who think they would win that no-confidence vote to make it worthwhile the trouble of putting in the letters. So it's not clear where this goes beyond rumbling sounds of battle and a battle over the whole identity of the Conservative Party, in part, in big part, triggered yesterday by the dismissal of Suella Braverman, the arrival of David Cameron, and in some on the right of the party's minds, a feeling that somehow the coalition that was brought together in that 2019 general election victory, that Rishi Sunak has somehow turned his back on that and is thinking of going back to an older way of doing conservative politics, which leaves them extremely worried and angry. Suella Braverman says when Rishi Sunak was desperate to get into number 10 without a leadership contest after Liz Truss's government collapsed, he agreed a contract with her, her price for backing him, which she says was pivotal in moving him into number 10. I'll see you back. Okay. back the road. All right. All right. So much, in a three-page letter, Suella Braverman said to Rishi Sunak he'd broken all his assurances to her on reducing immigration, derogating from sections of the European Convention on Human Rights. She also accused him of a betrayal of your promise to the nation that you would do whatever it takes to stop the boats. With the government nervously awaiting tomorrow's Supreme Court judgment on whether it can legally deport asylum seekers to Rwanda, the former Home Secretary has preemptively attacked Rishi Sunak, saying, if we lose in the Supreme Court, you will have wasted a year. Your magical thinking has meant you have failed to prepare any sort of credible plan B. But Suella Braverman says, even if the government wins in the Supreme Court, Rishi Sunak has failed to secure the Rwanda project against legal challenge and deportations will be delayed for months. The twice-sacked Home Secretary then turns to the pro-Palestinian demonstrations in London, which triggered her removal from office. She writes, I have become hoarse urging you to consider legislation to ban hate marches. Your response has been uncertain, weak and lacking in the qualities of leadership. Service, she writes, requires bravery. It is not about occupying office as an end in itself. The letter continues, someone needs to be honest. Your plan is not working. Your resets have failed and we are running out of time. This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Suella Braverman has not yet published the secret contract she says Rishi Sunak signed just before he made this statement and took power. Number 10 said the Prime Minister believes in action, not words. The statement published in place of any reply says the Prime Minister's proud of his new united team focused on delivery. 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome, especially a warm welcome to those for whom it's their first cabinet and also welcome to those for whom it may not be their first time. Earlier, the new cabinet met for the first time. Rishi Sunak's star signing, Lord Cameron, sat in front of him. His hiring and Suella Braverman's firing has stirred some Tory backbenchers to complain the party's deserting the supporters, won over in red wall seats after Brexit. When you saw David Cameron walking up Downing Street, you felt the clock was being turned back on conservatism a bit. Well, yes, to some extent. And in 2016, the clear message was we've had enough of the elites. You know, the difference between the views of the elites on any issue you want to pick, and I don't just mean the Conservative Party, I mean the kind of consensus in Westminster, whether it's immigration, whether it's industrial policy, all these issues, there is a gap between what the elite think and what ordinary people in places like where we represent. What happens if the government doesn't listen to the plea you're making today? Then I think we're going to lose the election. The fact is, the, the whole parliamentary party recognises that we need to, to deliver a success for our party at the election. Some of us think we need to do that in the spirit of the 2019 election victory that brought together people from all over the country. Others seem to think that it's possible to sort of repeat David Cameron's trick of 2015. I, think, I don't think that will work. Government ministers boast of a reshuffle that had cut through. Good to be back, Lord Cameron. But it's also widened divisions amongst Conservatives. The new Foreign Secretary, for some, a signal that the party is sailing back to past policies and faces, and the country wants radical change. Larry Gibbon there. Well, joining me now from Westminster is the Conservative MP, Richard Graham. Richard Graham, you spoke out against the tone of Suella Braverman, um, the tone she used against marches. What did you make of the tone and substance of this resignation letter? Uh, I must confess, I haven't read it all in detail, but... Um... Uh, I suspect I probably wouldn't agree entirely with the, the tone in there either. I can help you a little bit. It's pretty grim, actually, a pretty grim either-or. She claims he's either too incompetent to deliver on his promises or perhaps even worse, he never intended to deliver on those promises in the first place. So she questions his competence and his integrity. Mm. Probably not ideal. But, it, I mean, how damaging is it for Mr Sunak? She is saying he is weak, he is ineffective, she is saying that he uh, signed what she seems to suggest is some sort of contract when she agreed to support him. I'm assuming that contract will appear if it exists on television uh, any day now. This is all very damaging for him, isn't it? Well, look, I think that we've got a Prime Minister who is absolutely focused on finding practical problems to real issues that concern people's daily lives. That is absolutely what the Prime Minister is about. In every meeting I've ever had with him on everything from onshore wind uh, onwards, you know, he is very focused and looks closely at what the issue is and tries to find the best solutions. And I think that's what he's done in the reshuffle. I think we got... James cleverly going to the Home Office with a different tone, a man who's very calm and measured. He showed that at the Foreign Office. He's got his own experience in uniform service, and I think he'll bring that to bear in his relationships with the police. So I think the Home Office will be a happier place now. And I think in David Cameron coming to the Foreign Office, we've got someone with huge experience uh, who will be incredibly helpful in looking after the foreign but, policy but what, side of the government's agenda. What Sorry. Suella Braverman says in this letter is he has no mm. problem with the focus that you talk about. He has no problem with coming up with pledges. He is simply not delivering on them. Mr Sunak promised to stop the boats. He hasn't. The Rwanda policy is stuck in the court. If the Supreme Court decision goes against him now tomorrow on the back of this explosive letter, headline-grabbing letter, it will be pretty tough for him, won't it? Well, let's see, first of all, what happens tomorrow. I, I personally doubt that it will be an absolutely clear yes or absolutely clear no. I think there will be some elements around it which will probably uh, give the government a little bit of work to do, but there may be some opportunities as well. In terms of work on stopping the boats, actually, you know, we know that the figures we've seen so far are that about a fifth less boats are coming than was the case uh, last year and I suspect the next figures that come out will show a further fall so there has been some real progress obviously it would help if the Supreme Court gave a judgment that allowed some progress on taking some people to Rwanda and I think on the other points that uh, he very much committed himself to the Prime Minister will be proved right in terms of inflation being halved getting the economy growing again is proving a harder task than perhaps he'd hoped 
but we're all going to have to do our bit to work on that. You know, I do this as the Prime Minister's trade envoy, <laughs> trying to gear up our exports to the Far East. So everybody's got a role to play. You can't do it all single-handedly. But the, the difficulty for you and others who support Mr Sunak is that, as the former Home Secretary often reminded people, she's pretty confident she speaks for the quiet majority in the country, in the party. This look, is going to be dangerous for him at this moment, isn't it? Well, look, can I just tell you that I think I've got a pretty good feel for how colleagues feel here. I'm an elected board member of the Conservative Party and I know what my own association in Gloucester feels. And I do not think it is correct to say that she speaks for the quiet majority in the Conservative Party. There are good, decent Conservatives all over the country who do not believe that homeless people choose to live in tents as a lifestyle option who do not think that everybody marching for peace is a hate marcher and it's the tone that matters and that's what the Prime Minister is reflecting in the changes that he's but made and that new appointments will reflect. I mean as we head towards closer and closer towards an election Labour's Lisa Nandy describes this as part of an ongoing Tory psychodrama now she would wouldn't she but the truth is this could be the touch paper to light yet another bout of infighting within your party that in the end could cost you the election. Well, I think that is pretty unlikely, personally. I think you're always going to have differences of opinion within a party. We're a very broad church. We had Bill Cash and Ken Clark with very different views on Europe for many decades working together peacefully here in Parliament. And this Conservative Party is no different. But we've got a leader who's focused on getting practical results. We've got a team of people that I think is a very good government. And we've got a lot of very decent colleagues who will be working hard to make sure that their constituencies get exactly the sort of service that they need. Richard Graham, thanks very much for talking to us this evening. Thank you.